Okay, so we are back in Flight Simulator and we have the TBM 930. I haven't flown this for ages and ages. So this is going to be a reminder for me as much as it is for anybody else that's not used it for a while or if you've not used it, hopefully I'll be able to explain things along the way. I may, I may have to hunt for things around the cockpit because it's so long since I've used it. So let's go and have a look at little nav map first. Um, and see, we're going to fly from Granada down over the coast of Spain, south coast of Spain, down towards Gibraltar. And then we're going to fly around Gibraltar and come in for a landing. OK, so we'll program the flight plan in. You can see we've got some waypoints to code in into the aircraft. But obviously the aircraft's cold and dark at the moment, so we'll go and see about setting the aircraft up. So the 930... Uh, Daha 930, the TBM. It is a low-wing aircraft, so there are fuel pumps to pump the fuel into the engine. Therefore, you have to select which fuel tank the fuel is coming from. You will see there are a number of uh, controls for the throttle. So you move the throttle over towards the left-hand side to get power. Otherwise, on the idle, is effectively cut off. So it, you can also reverse the throttle so that means going for reverse pitch um other than that it's pretty standard stuff really you've got the flap lever over there uh, there's a trim wheel here um so let's have a look overhead and see how we get this thing started up so first things first is electrical power we're going to need to begin with so they both levers here are off at the moment so we will turn the main power to battery and we'll turn the generator to on we will turn the ignition to auto it's already on auto we can move the starter to start we can move the fuel selector to automatic we can move the autopilot switch to on and we can turn the external lights on we can turn the taxi light on and let's see what we've got some beeping going on about. So it's complaining about lack of fuel pressure and things like that. So we can make the warnings go away. We can switch on the second screen. So this is the multifunction display. This is the primary flight display, which corresponds with PFD and MFD. For So this is the settings panel. It's a touch screen for setting each of these displays. So down here, we're going to need to turn on the pito left and pito right switches. We can see it also it's saying bleed is not on, so we'll put bleed on auto. And that's pretty much it in terms of getting the aircraft up and running. But obviously, we have no flight plan configured. Oh, we should perhaps have a look at the... This is the master control panel for the autopilot. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. You've got a heading knob, which you can press to select the heading you're pointing. Obviously buttons to activate each thing, and you get a light alongside each button if it's activated. You've got approach mode, back course mode, nav mode, so that's following the flight plan. You've got a course knob as well as heading, which comes into play with VORs. You've got the flight director, so if you look on the display up here, if we turn the display on and off, you can see the flight director comes on or not. Uh, transfer autopilot so that's to switch to either side of the cockpit altitude hold mode vertical speed mode flight level change mode and speed so barometric pressure you can press it to go to standard which will obviously toggle or you can roll it to change the barometric pressure of the altimeter so we can see that happen do that you see the altimeter change if I press B it will change it to the local barometric pressure as per normal with all aircraft in flight sim okay so down here on the primary flight display menu you will see we have a CDI or course deviation indicator on the screen um, we can change the mode at the moment it's operating in VOR mode if we press the nav source 
it changes to VOR2 and press it again, it goes to GPS mode, which is what we want for today to follow the flight plan. So we haven't actually got a flight plan yet, so let's go down there and do that. So if we go to the MFD, so the multifunction display, which has got the map on it, we can program a flight plan. So we're going to put in our origin. So we're going to broadly replicate this one, L-E-G-R. So L-E-G-R is where we're leaving from. Let me press enter. And that will appear as the origin. The destination is L-X-G-B, which is Gibraltar. L-X-G-B. And press enter. And we're going to put some en route waypoints in place. Add en route waypoints. So G-R-A. G-R-A. And press enter. And obviously it's got many. So we can look for the one that's the nearest. It's this one here, like four and a half nautical miles away. So it's put GRA in place. We can drag this. We can add another one after it. Rixer. R-I-X-U-R. And press enter. And obviously there's no, du there's no duplicates. We could put heights in each of these if we want. We're not going to bother. Add another en route waypoint after Rixer is going to be MGA, VOR station. Press enter. And again, it's this one here, MGA, 36 miles away. Add another en route after MGA is Bella, B E L L A. Enter. Again, it's not going to be the one that's nearly 5,000 miles away, it's the one that's 70 miles away. Add another one, Yankee, Y-A-N-K-E. I presume we're going to get lots of duplicates. Yeah, we are. Look, there's, there's the one we want. Add en route, GB403. I very much doubt this is going to have any duplicates. Enter. Nope. Add another one is GB513 so we want GB513 enter add another one GB509 GB509 enter add another one GB409 GB 409 enter and GB096 is the final waypoint before we turn in so GB what was it again 096 enter so that's our flight plan route programmed if we want to see it on this map if we go back to the MFD screen you'll see there's a range so this becomes the range for the screen when it's in MFD mode. So then we can see our, our little map, which should broadly replicate what we've got here, which is good. OK, so we are going to fly the route. If we go and look, we're going to go as fast as we can. So we may as well climb up to 12,000 feet. So we're going to set that immediately while we're on the ground down here. So we're not following a standard instrument departure, we're just following waypoints. So let's take this straight to 12,000. Takes us ages because they removed the acceleration from the knobs in the cockpit, which is really annoying. Um, we can go vertical speed to get there, just for the argument's sake of showing you how this works. So VS. So there's our target altitude above the altitude ribbon. We're now going to set a, a target vertical speed to get there. And you can see the number climbing here. So we'll go to begin with at 1500 feet a minute and see how we get on. Because we're going to tune the throttle along the way to see what we can get away with in terms of engine temperatures. So just while we're on the parking brake, let's rev the engine up and see if the dials are alive and they are so the torque was increasing 
temperature was increasing. Prop RPM was good. Okay, so let's get flaps to take off position. So you can see the flap indicator has moved there to take off. And we're going to get in the air, shall we? So, parking brake off. Let's go and have a look. Are we actually rolling yet? No, we're not quite rolling. I'm always a bit dubious of whether an aircraft is going to start rolling all on its own. So we can turn immediately left and then, or right and then left. So there's the taxiway over there. Okay, so we can press space to sit up so we can see over the nose for taxiing. And we can ease the throttle forwards. And make our way out to the taxiway. And of course there's a van driving straight towards us. Because there always is in flight sim. Oh no, it's not a van, it's an aircraft. Now, is this a game of chicken? Are they going to turn off? Or are they going to wait? Okay, we'll go around them. So we're in the TBM, it's incredibly fast in a straight line, so this flight, although it looks quite long, isn't going to take very long at all. Probably 20 minutes, half an hour tops. Along the way we'll have a play with the different navigation modes and using GPS navigation. And then take over for a manual landing into Gibraltar. So again, it does have approach mode, but Gibraltar has no ILS, so it's not much use to us. Whoa, overshot nearly. Okay. We're not going to need all of the runway. Okay, so full throttle. Hold the centre line. Rotate. And we're up. Gear up. Wait for the speed. Flaps up. You have to feed in a bit more elevator to counter the flaps not being there. It's quite a heavy aeroplane. It's that working great engine in the nose. I'm gently feeding out the back el the back stick pressure and the plane is taking over on its own. It's looking good. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the autopilot. So we'll turn on your damper as well and autopilot on. So we'll go for nav mode and it's going to start turning right anytime soon. He says famous last words. You can see on the course deviation indicator here, we had drifted slightly right from the flight plan. So we can see that happening here. Yeah, there you go. Look, we had drifted ever so slightly right because the wind had just pushed us. There's only a couple of knots worth of wind. So it's going to fly out to GRA and then turn right. So you can see the speed is climbing. We're climbing at 1500 feet a minute up towards our target of 12,000 feet. The reason we're going up there is because we want to go faster than 250 knots, which will obviously make our route quicker. But now we've got a temperature warning because I've left it on full throttle. I did it on purpose so you'd see that happen. So I'm going to gently ease the throttle back, which will bring the... Sorry, torque warning, not temperature warning. So I'll gently ease the throttle back to get rid of the torque warning. Okay, so plane is on autopilot. It's, it's following the the programmed flight plan on nav mode. 
and it's in GPS mode so it's just following the waypoints. Interestingly we are going to be turning right in a moment for MGA and if we have a look on the map MGA is actually a VOR so we're going to have a play with the radios en route. We'll switch over to heading mode while we're messing around just to give you a bit of an illustration of what that really means. So we're just coming up to the next waypoint so you can see the um, the next waypoint is always illustrated when you get within one mile of a waypoint it obviously flicks over and shows you the next one so it's showing us the route to MGA now it's 39 miles to go 243 degrees so it gives you all of the obvious information on the display it's very good OK, so as soon as the aircraft is stabilised, we will switch over to heading mode and then we'll go and have a play with the radios to show you how that works. OK, so we're just watching the climb out, coming up through 7,000 feet soon. So we're going to switch to heading mode, so before we do that you will see on this course deviation indicator there is a heading bug if we press the heading knob it will flick round to the direction we are heading so in other words it's, a, it's quicker than spinning the heading knob so obviously we could change that but we're not going to we're going to keep going that direction the reason we're doing that is we're going to go and have a play with changing the mode of this to VOR so if we go to the PFD screen we can change the nav source over to nav1. Yeah? And now we can go to the navcom screen and we can change the frequency that nav1 is programmed into. So we can see MGA is 112 degrees, uh, sorry, 112.0. So we can go and change, if we go to audio and radios, we can change nav1 to 112.0 and press. Enter. Now notice that has only made that into the standby frequency. We have to click uh, transfer to make it the active frequency. So now you can see based on this course we are on, we are not going directly to the peak. So this is where the course knob comes in. The course lets us turn the green arrow. Yeah, so it's saying from at the moment. Let's spin it round. So but the reason I say from is that's the direction, of course, we're highlighting. And that's saying basically the beacon is the opposite direction than the way we're wanting to go. So if we spin this round, you'll see that switches over. So it's saying, OK, yeah, so the beacon is, we're going to the beacon. And as we spin this round, the line will line up because we know we're on the line straight to it anyway. Yeah. So just out of interest to see how VOR radios work, if you've not watched any of my other videos, we're in heading mode. We're going to take a bit of a detour and we'll go to 210 degrees. So we're turning away from the flight path. Now look what's happening to the course deviation indicator. This is where it gets its name from. The green bar in the middle is moving to the right. That means we are to the left of the path at 244 degrees into the, rad the, um, the beacon on VOR1. So we've got VOR1 tuned to 112.0, yeah, which is MGA. You can see it highlighted here, look. So this is saying we are getting further and further to the left of the, of the 244 degree line. And you can see that here, look relative to us that 244 degree line into MGA is getting further and further to our right we are to the left of the line so if we chase that line we can get back onto that track so without looking at the map we can just say okay what if we turn more than that direction if we just go back to 244 degrees that's not going to be good enough we are now parallel to the line but getting no closer to it but if we wanted to be on that line at 244 degrees into 
MGA what we have to do is actually turn back across it and intercept it so we'll turn west go to 270 and we turn back when we get back to the line so when we are on top of the 244 degree line into MGA this green line will be in the middle so it's saying at the moment we are still to the left of it and you can see that is what's going on here look we are to the left of it and we're aiming in to intercept so then we turn left when we get back onto it okay, and you can obviously see that over here if we were to go to the um, MFD screen and we can zoom in and see that happening In a moment we're going to switch back to nav mode once we've kind of proved our point so the line is gently sweeping back in and we are at 12,000 feet 225 knots indicated I'm surprised we're not going a little bit faster than that to be honest I don't want to push the engine too much So we can now begin to turn this heading knob back around. Notice wind would have a bearing on this as well. So can we get the wind to display in here? It's giving us our ground speed and our true airspeed. so we've overshot now so we're over to the right so I've kind of left that on purpose so you can see that happening we're to the right of the line if we press nav it will automatically correct so here we go ready planes turning left instantly and it's going to go and intercept the line and then correct itself Okay, so on the MFD screen, something that's quite cool with the um, TBM is you can see the weather. So we can click on weather selection and we can have the, the weather radar, which isn't showing much at the moment. Obviously there's nothing out there to see, is there? Oh, there is though. So, okay, so have I not switched something on? Or is it just not working at the moment? if I missed a switch somewhere Okay, we're not going to worry too much about that. I'll come back to that on a later video. I've probably missed something somewhere. I was expecting that to show us some weather, which would have been nice. Okay, aircraft systems. Let's go and have a look. Lighting configuration, that's nice. <laughs> Speed bugs, waypoint, nearest airfield, direct to. Uh, you can do procedures like holds and things like that, I'm guessing. Oh no, it's just to do the to program SIDs and stars weather selection okay that's what we were just looking at obviously you've got map settings as well but we'll leave that anyway so you've got oh here we go the wind is being shown at the top right I hadn't spotted it earlier so it is it is shown to us okay how are we doing overall so if we have a look outside see the coast of Spain over there we're about to turn across the top of Malaga which 
Let's retake this thing up to 18,000 feet and see how it handles the speed up there. So, going up to 18,000. So I'm setting a target altitude. And we'll go there on... Let's do on flight level change and see what it does. That's interesting. doesn't want to do much does it what about speed mode no. let's go for vertical speed I'll have to have a read up on some of the modes to see exactly how they work so we're going to go a thousand feet a minute up to 18,000 now notice we have not got a mode in operation on the autopilot at the moment so I'm going back to nav mode and we're not in GPS here yeah so we have to remember to come back to primary flight display and go and put this back on GPS mode. And now it will start following the flight plan again. So nav mode. Yeah, I had left it in VOR mode. So it had flown into the VOR. And we know from lots of the aircraft in Flight Simulator and the way their systems work, if you are in VOR mode, or in nav mode and you're flying towards a VOR and the CDI is in VOR mode when you pass over it the aircraft switches off nav mode and just goes to roll mode so it's essentially doing wing leveling to keep you going in a straight line because I guess the aircraft doesn't want to preempt what you want to do when you get there you've got to the destination it's just going to keep the wings level at that point So we're slowly climbing, hopefully get a bit more speed. So our true airspeed is 257. Our speed over the ground is 249. If you ever wonder why they are different, true airspeed factors in wind and the ground speed factors in your actual speed. So indicated and true airspeeds are both indicated. So they're to do with the air pressure hitting the pitot tube. Obviously the higher you get in the sky, the air gets thinner, so you don't appear to be going as fast on the instruments, but you're actually going very fast. So look, we're only indicating 205 knots, and if you look down the bottom at the ground speed, we're doing nearly 250 knots. Okay. Pretty airplane, isn't it? How are we doing in terms of the engine? Let's have a look. It's pretty high torque level. Let's just see if we can eke a little bit more out of it. I'm just pushing the torque up towards 100% <laughs> without setting any alarm bells off. Even climbing at 1,000 uh, feet a minute, it's still holding to 200 knots, which is quite impressive, really. So the next waypoint is in 20 miles, 223 degrees, the Bell. Oh, sorry, Bella. That's just short for it. Outside air temperature, minus 13 degrees. So it's pretty cold up here, which is why you need pitot heat to make sure that the sensors for the um, indicated airspeed don't freeze up. There's not much to do mid-flight, is there? We'll have much more fun once we get to um, Gibraltar and get to fly around the waypoints on the way in. In reality, with Gibraltar, if you're flying into Gibraltar and you're coming around the back here, 
there's a line across the harbour where it becomes Spanish airspace and you're not supposed to fly into it on approach. So if you're coming in this way, you have to stay tight. You can't come out flying across, unless you have permission, of course, to fly in over the hills. So the usual route you follow is a very tight route in. And that uh, that's the same for um, civil aviation as well. Quite often there's one of the common standard approach routes into Gibraltar is a very steep turn across the bay, which is quite challenging with the bigger jets. So we're going to start descending soon. We just came up to 18,000 to see how fast we can go really. We can descend very quickly in a TBM, we just pull the engine back and fall towards the ground. Okay, so you can see there's a standby attitude indicator and altitude and airspeed indicator as well. And that gives you the barometric pressure obviously for the standby. some of the switches. I'm quite annoyed that the clouds didn't appear. I would have expected them to appear. Unless it was only showing the ones that were in line with us, but you would have expected it to show in the plot clouds were either above or below us. It's frustrating. Okay, so we're at 18,000 feet, so we're doing, what's the ground speed, 275 knots, it's pretty quick isn't it? I think if you go to high altitude with this thing, like 25,000 foot, you can get 300 knots out of it. going by. Now I wonder if this aircraft will show the route on the map when we look at it. It may do, because we programmed it and it's one of the stock aeroplanes. Yes, it has looked, it's showing it. That's quite interesting. So the CJ4 with the working title mod didn't show this, but this has. the aircraft. We're going to set our target altitude, which today for us is going to be 1500 feet. Keep rolling, keep rolling. <laughs> at a vertical speed to come down at 1,000 feet per minute which would take 15 minutes we can come down faster if we need to yeah let's go faster than that let's go for 1,500 feet a minute let's go faster 
faster than that even. If we came down at two and a half thousand feet a minute, now you can see the airspeed is climbing, so our concern now becomes about overspeeding the airframe. So we'll see how much the aircraft accelerates and if need be we can pull the throttle back which I'm doing now just to arrest the acceleration now you can see there is a rate of change marker you can see the the purple or magenta or whatever I can't quite see the color pink isn't it sorry um, that indicates the rate of change of speed so you can see when you're balancing the throttle you can see if you're accelerating or decelerating a very fine grained amount. Obviously if I cut the throttle and the sim has paused. This happens on every single video doesn't it? Just wait for the sim to unpause itself. You will hear systems in the cockpit probably clunk around as it reinitializes itself. So thanks to Sobo. Nicely done. Hopefully it will unpause itself. Sometimes it pauses for 10 seconds, sometimes 20. You never quite know. And sometimes it never releases and that's the end of your flight. And there it goes, it's just released. And you heard things clunking around in the cockpit. There's something horrendously wrong with the simulator. So I'm going to speed back up now. See, so we're coming in towards Gibraltar. Let's come down a bit faster so we get to see the, the rock on approach. So we'll kill our speed. Coming down at 4,000 feet a minute. programmed that accidentally. Now we're coming down into the cloud now. So we'll be in the cloud for a few moments and then when we dip below we'll be able to see the rock directly in front of us. That should be quite cool. Let's go and zoom in this map while we're en route. So we go to MFD mode and then this knob will allow us to change the zoom level. To the clouds we go, down to 10,000 feet. We didn't change the barometric pressure when we were above 10,000 feet to the standard level, which was a mistake on my part. So we are going to go and check while we're still descending what the QNH should be at uh, Gibraltar. So in the meta information we can see 1021, which is the opposite that we want this to show this in. So we're going to cheat and press B, I think it's going to be the same, it is the same. Okay, we're in the clouds now, which is quite cool. We should dip out of the clouds just in time to see the Rock of Gibraltar right in front of us. With a little bit of luck. Remember, we're going to level out at 1500 feet. So we may already be doing a left turn by the time we see it. Or we may be lucky. Clouds a bit lower than anticipated. getting ready to turn and there's the rock just appearing out of the cloud and looking at our height we've got another thousand feet to go 
let's go and look out this side. It's going to be in the cloud, isn't it? It's a pretty horrendous day. There's the runway over there. So it's raining in Gibraltar today. Let's go and check the temperatures because we've been in the cloud. Have we frozen up at all? So it's outside air temperature is 10 degrees. That's fine. And there's the rock of Gibraltar. It's just below the cloud. So we're just following our route. So let's go and... We need to keep an eye on airspeed because we were running on idle, remember? So we're going to hold it at... knots ish so we're letting the autopilot fly us in and as soon as we get to the last waypoint we'll go manual so again the course deviation indicator is just showing us the direction of the next waypoint each time yeah so it's going from GB 50 to GB 40 next Four zero nine, I should say. It's it's abbreviating them, isn't it? And chopping the numbers off. And then once we get within a mile of that, it will show the next one. So it'd be zero nine six. There it goes. And we can see out here. If we go and quickly look across, we can see the the rock in the rain see some cruise ships and the runway below so let's go and off the autopilot so we're trying to lose some airspeed Before we turn in, so there we go. Landing gear. Landing gear. Just put the gear down. Overshot the turn a little bit. I was going a little bit too quick. It's a big runway, so we haven't got any concerns at all, really. So we can sit up in our seat a little bit. roll out and so I keep and we're looking for the turn off to come over to the terminal building which should be in a moment and there it was <laughs> we rolled straight past it so we're going to do a slightly unconventional turn here and try not to take out the lights and we'll go and park up Terminal for Gibraltar. That's it. Parking brake on. Oral warning, okay. 
And that's it. So that was the TBM. It's um, obviously shutting it down. It's just a question of cutting the engines and then um, cutting the electric power and you know t returning switches to their stock positions. You're going to get warnings go off all the time as you disable things because it says, oh, you're not supposed to be doing that because it doesn't know you're not flying anymore. Um, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward to turn the engine off. So we can pull the engine back. So the engine has a... Now I can never remember how to do this. How to turn the engine to... There is a, a, a trick to this, to getting the engine over there. The throttle, I should say. But yeah, so yeah, the um, the TBM is very good. It's good fun. Obviously, if you want to just cut everything off, you can literally just pull this bar, and it kills the kills the aircraft basically. If you want to cut the engines entirely, you can turn the fuel off, and there you go. Have a look from outside, you'll see the throttle spinning down. That's the rocket Gibraltar in the background there. So we'll sit and watch the propeller. There we go, and we're done. So there we go. That was a flight from uh, Granada to Gibraltar, messing around in the TBM, having a look at some of the systems on board for navigation. It's pretty straightforward. It's nice because it has touch screens, which makes it very quick for programming routes. There's a Kodiak parked over there, look. Um, and yeah, Gibraltar is actually modelled quite well, isn't it? You can see inside the terminal building and everything. I don't know how accurate that is. It's probably missing lots of signage and adverts and things like that. Okay, I'm going to stop there.